Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to be in the house of prayer one more time. We ask you that you continue to bless through your mighty name, O oh God. Yes. That you send forth healing and deliverance. That you will break yokes and chains yes. and fetters that bind men's hearts and soul from serving you, O oh God. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our church, Lord. Yes. For every Sunday school superintendent, Lord, and assistant. Yes. For every treasure, Lord, O oh God. We bless your bless every Sunday school teacher in a mighty way. Yes. Continue to bless, Lord, past and first lady Allen, the entire family. Yes. Bishop and Sister Stern, O oh God. Yes. We ask you to bless the Sunday school this morning, O oh God. Yes. O oh God. That you would bless, Lord, this right now, Lord Jesus. Yes. Oh God, that would you speak, Lord, to Sister Washington, oh God. Yes. Deliver, Lord, Lord. Speak, Lord. Give us ears to hear and a heart with Syria. See you, Lord. Work a mighty miracle, Lord Jesus. Yes. Encourage your people, Lord Jesus. Yes. Oh God, through your word. We thank you in the mighty Jesus Christ. Yes. And count you worthy all glory and honor. In Jesus' name we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 We are Christ on our Sunday school lesson. Lesson number six, July the 12th, 2020. Our subject on today is miraculous multiplication. Miraculous multiplication. We look at this word miraculous. It is performed by or involving a supernatural power. It is extraordinary, astonishing, incredible, phenomenal. Somebody might say it's marvelous. Having the power to work miracles. Multiplication is increasing, or it causes to increase greatly the number of quantity. This lesson is a Another faith lesson. And we pray that our faith will be increased on today. Our focus thought together is God can take what we have and miraculously multiply it to bless us. We're going to read that one more time. God can take what we have and miraculously multiply it to bless us. We have had several series of lessons, and we are dealing with kings. Previously, we dealt with first kings, and the key person in first kings was Elijah. But today, we're in second kings. And the central person in 2 Kings is Elisha. If we can recall, Elisha wanted a double portion right. of the Spirit. Yes, yes. And yes, that happened. There's a little bit difference between Elisha and Elisha. Elisha, he served about 25 years. But Elisha, his mission was about 50 years to the children of Israel, the northern kingdom. So we know there's quite a bit of miracles, and there's the difference between the different miracles that both of them did through the power of God. Yes. Today we're going to deal with another miracle. And as we deal with this miracle, we're going to see one thing. We're going to have to use what we got. But there's a whole lot more in this besides something natural. Go ahead. I have to say that. Right. We're going to read 2 Kings verses 4, 1 through 7 together. And there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant can fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take it to him, my two sons, to be bondsmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell him, What shall thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid 
have not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then she said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him. And, and shut, shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought, brought the vessels to her, and, and she poured out. out. And, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the boys stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go. Sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. We're going to go back to the first verse here. And we realize that the focus verse is the last verse. So we're not going to deal with that right now. But the first verse, we're going to begin to kind of break that down a little bit. Let's see what's going on. And there cried a certain woman. May, you may look at this and you might automatically skip over the first part. It says, now there are cried. I don't know if you noticed that or not. There cried a certain woman. We look at that word cry. Cry has something to do with emotion. This lady was crying because she was emotional on the inside. Something was going on. The next portion says, a certain woman. It didn't say a name. But if we notice that a certain woman is just like an ordinary woman. A certain woman. The name, in other words, is not that important. Sometimes we we look at it and we say, well, what this was me or that was you. But it says a certain woman. You know, God does not have a respect of person. Go ahead. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha. She had cried. Now let's look at Elisha. The name Elisha means the Lord, or should I say, God is salvation. This name, God is salvation, he's going to demonstrate victory in so many words. He's going to de demonstrate deliverance. Hallelujah. I have to say, as she cried unto the Lord, if you look at that first statement, there's a whole lot in there. She tells almost the whole life of what's going on. She said, thy servant, my husband, is dead. She doesn't stop there. So that lets us know that she is a widow. She's grieving. That's why she's crying. She's, it's, 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 she's hurting. And there's a whole lot of people are hurting today. Right. Right. A whole lot of people are in anguish. Some people has grief. They're going through many sorrows. They need help. In this lesson, we're going to see what she did when she was in sorrow. What she did when she needed help. She went to the man of God and he had a solution. 
Now let's look on and see what else she began to say. She went to the man of God and she said, now you know my husband was a, a God-fearing man. So that lets you know okay. that he believed in God. Okay. And that lets you know that the man of God knew all about him. She went on to say that the creditors is on my back, so to speak. I can imagine, I can't even really imagine, I, I should say, what she was going through. Because she went on to say, the creditor has come and they're getting ready to take my two sons to be bondsmen. What are bondsmen? They're slaves. She owed a debt that she could not pay. And she was terrified. And we, many people, everybody at one time owed a debt that they could not pay. Right here, we're going to see that natural debt. But we're not going to stop there. All right. The creditor, as we look at creditor, what is a creditor? If we look it up, we, it would say a master of lending. They had a law back there, and whenever somebody was in deep, severe debt, there was a way out. Their way out, they would actually, and it was it was really kind of sad, but their way out, it could be the sons, it could be the daughters. They had to go into slavery to pay off the debt. And yet, that master could not be severe. They would have to work for them for at least six to seven years and then be released. But she went to the man of God and she's in grief and she asks him in so many words, what are we going to do? If we look at verse number two again, Elisha said, Two questions. He asks her the question, what shall I do for you? What do you want? What do you want? Then he asked this, he asked her, what do you have in so many words in your house? Oh, if we would ask that question, if we was in debt and if we would ask you, What's in your house? What do you think? You oh, you might say, well, I've got a yacht. I've got a van. I've got a car. I've got a truck. Go ahead. She said, I don't have anything but a pot of oil. A lot of times, we might think we have nothing, Harley. Go ahead. But there are so many people that is in so much need, you are blessed. You're very blessed. Let's go on just a little bit further. In verse number two, she says, I have nothing but a pot of oil. And I want to ask this question for you to think about this morning. Why? What you say, oil? What? Why is what is the importance of oil in that day? Oil had lots of meaning. What did they use oil for? They used it for many things. Somebody said, "Well, I need 
I needed the oil to cook with. How many times do you cook and you don't use oil? Somebody said, well, I'm going to pan fry some fish. You need some oil, don't you? That's right. I'm going to deep fry some fish. You need some oil, don't you? Yeah. I'm going to make a cake. You need some oil? I'm going to make this. The need for oil. What else did they use oil for? They use oil for light. Yes, we can turn on the electric light. But they had to use a natural light that was a lamp. What else did they use it for? Oil was used for anointing. The kings had to be anointed with oil. The priest had to be anointed with oil. The prophet had to be anointed with oil. A need for oil. I would like to ask you this question. What's your need? What do you need this morning? A need for oil. In verse number three, he gives her some instructions. And before we go into those instructions, I will read verse number three one more time. And it says, Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, not a few. Not a few. First of all, she's going to need oil. And really, I don't know if she really knew what he had in mind. See, God has a master plan. We might just look at some minor little things. But God looks all down the line. He tells her to go borrow vessels. Now, if you look in here, if you look at the last verse, you're going to see that word go one more time. But this go, he tells her, to go borrow vessels. Now, what is a vessel? A vessel is, it is a material thing that is used for something. It could be a tool. It could be a utensil. It could be a container, container so to speak. There's all kinds of vessels. Vessels are made out of all kinds of things. Some vessels were made out of wood. Some were made out of pottery. Some are made out of gold, silver, iron, many different things. She tells, or he tells her rather, to go get a vessel from your neighbors. Now, this thing is so uh, awesome. I would like to say this also. A vessel also is re preferred also to persons. And in this lesson, we're going to see how God bless naturally. First of all, she has to trust. She has to obey. And then she has to believe. Empty vessels. Even empty vessels. If you notice, he says now, go abroad. 
you and your sons, I mean, just get as many as you can. Bring them back. And I want them filled. Just start pouring. Just start pouring. Now, I would like to say, see, God, God has a master plan. And we're just looking at this naturally. As she began to pour, the oil began to overflow into each one of the containers. Now, there's a whole lot that we could talk about. Now, first of all, a vessel I guess we could feel, finish this and we'll come back to it. But vessels were to be used for many things and they were used for many things. But as she went out and she got gathered everything, if we look at verse number four, that when they began to fill and fill the different ones, there was a miraculous thing that happened. Was this the first time that God has ever done anything miraculous? Oh, no. Many times. See, if we look at Joshua, at one time, remember the sun stood still? Look at Moses. He struck a rock. Water came out. It wasn't a trickle of water. But it was so much water. The Bible says it was rivers of water. It was enough for the animals to eat. The people to eat. It was thousands of people. God can do miraculous things. We, we can't even imagine what God can do and what God can will do for us if we only trust him. I believe that many times we limit God. In verse number five, it says she went from him. She shut the door upon her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Now, what happened? The vessels, as she poured, they would begin to fill up. Doesn't that remind you? Remind you of what happened? When you go in the New Testament, and we can read there for a moment, in the New Testament, St. Matthew, around the 14th chapter, we can read that, verses number 15 through 21. Jesus multiplied loaves and bread and fish. We're going to go there right now. And we're going to see because he is showing, see, everything God does, he has a reason. And he wants us to understand who he is. And he doesn't want us to stop there. Now, somebody said, but I want to finish this lesson right now. And I want to talk about what he will do for me naturally. But it's always more than just that. Right. He wants to do something beyond that. But he wants to show us what he can do. You know, he has to deal with us. You know, we we, we, we limit. We, we, we have a limitation. But God is so awesome. As we go to this 14th chapter of Matthew, verse number 15 through 21, I want us to read. I want us to see how he began to multiply there. 
verse number 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, him saying, this, this is, is a desert place, place and the, the time, time is now past. Send them all to do away, that they may go to the villages and, and buy themselves bitters. And Jesus said unto them, they need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up into heaven, he blessed and break. And gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained it twelve loaves full. And they had eaten above five thousand men, besides women and children. Multiplied loaves and fish. Now, he did that naturally because he knew that they were hungry. He could feel, he felt their infirmities. He didn't stop there. In that sixth chapter of John, he stands out and he says, I am the bread of life. So he shows them something natural and he says, you know what? I'm going to show you something spiritual. The same thing. If we were going to John, the 11th chapter, and we're not going to go into it all the way, but in the 11th chapter of John, when Jesus, after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead? Did he just raise him just to raise him? No. He did it. And then he stands up and he said, I am the resurrection. That's right. See, he has a master plan and he wants us to understand what it's all about. Now, we're going to go on just a little bit further because we want to see why this oil? Why vessels? All right. Let's go just a little bit further. So she went in from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full. Now, did you notice that? When they were full, she tells her sons, go get, go get another one. Go get another one. And he says, there's no more. Go ahead. Look what God has done. Go ahead. He miraculous. Now, after this happens, after this takes place, then the lady says, goes back to the man of God and gets some more instructions. What are the instructions now? Go. Go. Sell the oil. Pay your debt. And give thou and your children rest. God's going to take you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Divine supply. This lesson is showing that the Lord shall provide. But how shall he divide? How shall he provide? God will show down in the history of the Bible, time after time, how he will survive, how he will provide. 
He proves himself to Elisha that he is a healer. He proves to him that he is a deliverer. He proves to him that he is a provider, that the Lord is there, that he is a protector when battle comes. It's so many things. Now let's go back, and I, I'm kind of anxious to get to this. Because I believe that it's very important. You might, you might say, well, this is not very important. But to me, this is the emphasis here. If we notice, she went out, they went out, and they got vessels. The vessels, a vessel to get light, you need oil. And in the scriptures, Oil is a type of the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. Now, can you let your light shine at all without oil? Without the Holy Ghost? No. Let's go back. Let us go back. In the tabernacle, right. and it's very important. In the tabernacle, there was a golden candlestick. First of all, the golden candlestick, every vessel, and you notice in there, they call them vessels. Every vessel in there, on the inside, represented Christ Jesus, who was going to come on the scene Many years later. These vessels in there was made, the candlestick was made of beaten gold. Now that's very important to know. Now, they had to beat the gold by hand. The same thing. Don't forget, I told you, it was pointing to Jesus Christ coming on the scene. What happened to him? They had to beat him with many stripes. Hallelujah. This gold had to be beat. The candlestick, it represented the deity of Christ. Divine glory. Representing also purity. Now look at this candlestick. The candlestick, in order for it to have light, because in there was total blackness. Right. We live in a world you live in a world, when you came in this world, you was in sin, you was in total darkness. In that tabernacle, in order for this light to burn, it had to have oil. What kind of oil? What kind of oil? Was it, pro, was it pro petroleum jelly? No. It was olive oil. Look at it. Where did they get olive oil? From the tree. How did they get it? They had to crush it. It had to beat it. Once they got the oil, now don't forget, we're pointing right to Jesus. Once they got the oil, in Exodus, the 25th chapter, I believe it was verse number six, he told the children of Israel, 
He said, bring me, have them to bring me pure olive oil for light, for light. It took the oil to go through the light, to shine, to illuminate. It illuminated in the tabernacle. It makes me think about a scripture. It says, oh, sometimes when you get despondent, remember when you was first illuminated? See, you got the light because you got the Holy Ghost. This light, as we said on the other week, in Leviticus 24 and 2, the light in the golden candlestick was to burn continually. Matthews 5 and 16, through Jesus Christ, we become the light of the world to burn continually. This light was so important. And I would like to say this. This light was so important, it just wasn't just any kind of gold up there. There was actually three on each side. The one in the middle was called the lamp stand. Now, I mentioned that because each one of the branches, which looked like a tree, actually had blooms and flowers of almonds. It looked like it. And it was saying something. Remember, we said this was a type of Christ. Blossom. Christ was beat, he was going to resurrect. The same thing. After you suffer a while, later on you're going to blossom. God is going to resurrect you. This, this, this thing is so powerful. Let's go a little bit further and see the different miracles also that God did. And he did it in so many ways. Remember the manna? Somebody might say, you know what, with this lesson, you got to use what you got. And that's true. If you use what you got, then God will expand it. He might. See, God does things the way he wants to do it. He doesn't always do it that way. Many times he does. Remember the matter? Did man have anything to do with it? They didn't have a little bit of matter first and then he did it. God did it. Now the matter represented the bread of heaven. This thing is so powerful. And he wanted this lady when she got done. If we look at verse number seven, he told her to sell the oil, pay your debt. What's that going to tell us? God makes a way out of no way. We can't just throw it away, can we? We got to pay your debt. Somebody might say, well, you know, times are really hard. Sometimes it can be even easier if we do not dodge with the creditor Calls 
the phone. Somebody say, would you know what? I am late on my payment. I can't pay it. I know it's just them calling, so I'm not going to answer the phone. Being saved, we can't do that, can we? The Bible says that we are to owe no man nothing but to love him. So if we don't have the funds, we can't avoid it, what should we do? First of all, I would have to say, be honest with yourself. Get on the phone and call your creditor. If it's a mortgage that you cannot pay, ask them, I need an extension. Explain it to them. They will give you an extension, sometimes two months. They may give you an extension and it won't go against your credit. Sometimes, if you're late on that car payment, instead of dodging, get on the phone. Ask for an extension. And that two months or one month because you was honest and they say, all right, and they'll put it over for that next month or the next two months, it'll be a blessing for you. Then it might be where God will just miraculous do something. But we got to be honest. We have to be honest and we can't avoid it. God keeps proving himself to us. I look at another one of the things that happened in the Bible. When Jesus opened the blind eyes. Now what's that got to do with this lesson? We was talking about light. He can give us light. He can open natural eyes, but he can also open your spiritual eyes. He turned water into wine. Remember Mary? Mary says, do whatever he tells you to do. You know, he turned water into wine. Later on, he says that he was the living water. But isn't it something? He not only was the, is the living water, but he is the true vine. And out of the true vine, he can give you the Holy Ghost so you can have the fruit of the Spirit. God is just an awesome God, and we must say yes to his will. I look also in the Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse number six. And why did I go this way? Because I went this way because I want us to see there is a need for oil. How can you live a life if you don't have his spirit? That's, right. That's so important. That's so important. The sixth chapter of Matthew. Remember the ten virgins? There was five wives and there was five foolish. What was it? that they needed before the bridegroom came. Y'all remember what was it? Remember one group said, I got oil in my vessel. Another group, you might say diddled and daddled. They messed around. They didn't take, do what they ought to do. 
And when the bridegroom came, it was too late. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse number six. Let us look at it. I believe that I've said the wrong one. But so I see six and six is not that, but that's all right too. We know what happened with the five wise and the five foolish virgins. God is an awesome God, and He there is a need for oil into every vessel. We have a vessel. And even if there if we have a vessel, if, if your vessel is empty, he wants to fill it. God can fill it. That's right. Hallelujah. God can fill an empty vessel. And his once he fills that empty vessel, you can be full. He wants to fill you with his spirit. God is so good to us. The miraculous multiplication God can do it over and over and over again and the thing about this thing it never grows old Amen. it never grows old God is so good and we are going to complete this lesson on today and we hope that you have gotten encouraged and realized Yes, use what you got. But do you need anything else? Is it oil in your broken vessel? God bless you. Amen. Amen.